PreGame.com. Welcome back, PreGame.tv. I am really excited to be talking poker, and we're going to talk internet poker, station casinos now through Absolute Poker. You can go ahead and play online, legal, as long as you're here in Nevada. VR, how big do you think this is going to be? It's going to get huge. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing so much buzz about it everywhere I go. I think what needs to happen is people need to be explained how you go about signing up, how, what, what exactly you can play, you know, just, just all the, the things that, that come with it. I think that's what it is because people are so used to doing it kind of offshore type, you know what I mean, and not trusting it anymore. But now it's here in Nevada, and it's just like with the sports books. I mean, there's your money's safe. But let me, let, me, safe. let me help everyone out because I've already done it. I've already been playing. Perfect. Go over to Absolute Poker, set up an account, Set up, you, you, you just use your email, you set up a password, you set up well, yeah, whatever your alias you want to be called. I went ahead and used a very complex alias to make sure no one could identify me. Fezzik? Fezzik. I like yeah. it. Same thing I like as it. I do in the, in the, like in the LVH contest every year, which I is like kind it. of stupid that people can see my picks. But uh, then you go over, once you, you set that up on your computer, you, it's as easy as one, two, three. You drive over to any station, casino, can even be one of those little wildfires, I believe, or whatever, um, Wild Wild West, and you go to the cashier, you go ahead and deposit money, boom, you're ready to go. So I did that uh, smooth sailing. You played? And I played. I played. I used to play on Poker Stars. I, don't, I haven't played since all the problems, you yeah. know. Um, the, I like the Poker, frankly, I like the Poker Star software a little bit better, but part of that I'm getting used to the new yeah. software. So I fired up the four tables and I was play, playing the no limit. And what are the limits exactly? The highest game that they offered was a 3 6 no limit. So the maximum, the minimum buy in was 120. I think the max was, was either 300 they, or 3 They capped the max buy in? They capped the max buy in, but of course, if you stay there for five hours, you're on a good run. You, you, you could have two big stacks at the table build up, but you can buy in for as little as 20 big blinds. You can buy in for as much as, I don't know if it was 60 big blinds or 100. But um, so there, there aren't like the nosebleed games yet where you can play like 100, 200, right, no limit. Right. And nor will I, you think I think that's coming. I think it'll get larger. But you know, not, to that, down, not that, to that level. Down the stretch. Now, one thing that w it's, what's interesting to happen is that be a little bit cautious about you really want to track the guys you're playing against, how aggressive they are, because you've got some guys that just are rocks and they go all in and you know they have a set every time, whereas you've got some of the young kids and if they got a flush draw they're with an firing. older card, yeah, they're just going to, you know, if they're short stacked and you bet in them, they're just going to push. Would you that approach in. it the same way you did prior with Poker Stars, with all those full tilts with all those sites prior? What I found... Do you find the same type of players? What I found is the disparity is enormous. You have really good players, and you have some folks that are just clearly have not played online poker before, and they're just going to get crushed because... You know, I've, I've met a lot of people that never played, that were afraid to send their money offshore. Right, so, so I think what you're going to find is there's going to be really good opportunity. I think you want to probably play at a six-person table. They have six-person tables, and so people are going to try that out, and it's exciting, but if you haven't played six-man, and by, by the way, I don't know if you, if you knew this, I played in the World Series in an event a couple years ago, got 22nd, I think, in, a six, in the six-man. And it's, it's a, a whole different game. And that's what I used to play all the time online, so what's funny is that the wife's like watching me progress and we get down to like the final 30 and I'm like in 14th place and she's convinced I'm going to win it, you know? And then my pocket sevens go out to ace, ace jack all in. Feeling, man. You know, and one thing about these poker tournaments, you really like it when you go out on a coin flip. Everyone feels good. You know, the winner, the loser, it's like nothing I could do, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was time to get those chips in the blinds were eating me up. So they have a lot of tournaments? They, they, and they have a free roll. They have a free roll at the end of the month, so they're doing everything they can. The rake is very reasonable and I think this is the tip of the iceberg. I think you're going to see seven, eight other Nevada companies come in and do the same thing very shortly. And think about it, you're raking a dollar a game. Yeah. A dollar a game. A hundred hands an hour. Dollar. 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 It adds up. Contrast that to like trying to rake, you know, an average no of three risk. bucks at no 24 risk. hands an hour live. You got to pay the dealer, got to pay yeah. for all the infrastructure. This is the sort of thing I do think that now the actual live games in Nevada may take a slight that's hit. That's what I was going to ask you because that's, that's what I'm, I'm seeing a lot of guys, um, older betters that I know here in town, that never trusted sending their money to these sites to, you know, when it comes to sports betting, a lot of them have agents. Someone's going to stand for your money if you're sending it offshore. But what 
with the poker sites, a lot of people didn't have a, a middleman that was going to guarantee their money, and they never sent that money offshore. Right. Now, one now thing they, they the want to get involved. You exactly. Gotta be, you got to be here in Nevada. Exactly. I think if you're in California, I think you can visit here, and, set and up an account. That's what I was going to say. They got a GPS or whatever on your computer, but it's got to be actually, you can't do it on your laptop. It's got to be on, on, a, on a, a real computer that you're playing on. Right We're in, in Nevada. But that's going to change. I imagine all these places are going to come out with tablets and things. That Absolutely. Are and I think that's why right now is probably the best time because, like you said, you have people that never played online. And they actually like trace it to the cell phone. Uh, I'm getting the, the, the information on that. You actually, your cell phone is where they trace it to. I'm sure, because just like with the beeper accounts, the phone accounts and all that, if you cross the state line, they don't work it. You're out of action in Prim. Exactly. You know, That's once how you drive it is. over that border, you're done. Prim. You can't access your account anymore, your, your sports betting account. It's happened to me so many times. And I think now you're going to get a lot of people that older people that don't want to have to drive to the casino anymore. Granted, live poker is a different game. It's a social event. People go out. They want to meet people. They want to talk to people. They want to hang out. It's, it's different. But a lot just want to play. They just want to gamble. And I think you're going to get a lot of those new players that never played online before. And now they're gonna, so they don't have to drive to the casino. And I think this is gonna make some of the live games in Vegas softer because inevitably, and apologies to some of the great you know players that play sure. live locally, but Back in the heyday with the internet, playing live was never your optimal way to make money because you could fire up eight, 12 tables at, at the once, same time, sure. And you could just make more. I mean, it's it just too slow to play these live games yeah. unless you're playing absolute nosebleed stakes. You know, you're making $50, $80 an hour tops compared to some of these kids, these whiz kids playing 12 tables at once and, you know, with what they're making with rake back and everything else and the like. But I think that those those kids are going to gravitate back to because you can play eight tables at once. I, mean, I, I don't know well, how many. It's going to help the economy all the way around and sports betting and everything I think because now like you touched on last week I think where you have these kids that are in Canada in other places because that's where they're making their living playing now they could come and live in Vegas. Oh there's going to be some that are certainly going to come back and, and move here. And, 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 and one thing about the the, the difference between live and online is you see like the re-raise is so common. Like a guy raises on the button, people are re-raising with trash, three betting in the blinds, knowing the button raise is just a positional raise and you just don't get that. And it, it, it doesn't take as much guts. No one's looking at you. No, right. you don't no one to... could call you an idiot, you know? I mean, they could, no, you know, you're not shy about someone show, flipping your cards and seeing that seven deuce off suit that you won on the river with. Yes, and you're like flipping over, yeah, eight high. It's a little or you different. Got Eight high, you know, and, 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 yeah, and, and, and call on, on, on the river when the fourth club comes and you bet the pot because you're and like, you have surely to face he everybody. Call. You got to look at them. It, it, it really is true. The um, it's a different the, game. You know, my take too when I, when I'm playing online. There's a couple, of, if I may. Can I? You know, I love to Please, vent on God. things. I hate the hockey thing where you get half a win for losing an overtime. Agree. I Agree. hate the NBA. You call timeout. You advance the ball at the end of the fourth quarter. All right, poker. Poker players, I cannot stand the live poker when the guy bets 200, he bets $300, and he's got, even has like bills in front of him, and what does he, brings out the stack of red, brings out the other stack, the third stack, the dealer counts it up, the guy who's playing calls him, he's got black chips, he brings out his red chips, Imagine if we were playing blackjack, all right? And you bet $300 and you bet it with red chips. Absolutely. They look at you like you were retarded. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, truly an example of like everyone has done this. Like maybe Mike Matisau did this back in 1988 and everyone has, yeah. whatever reason, has copied it. What Phil the? Ivey, can you please tell people Bet the stupid green chips or the black chips. If you bet $250. No need to see the stack. You don't need to see the stack. And I, I, I have to tell you, like, and I and pros do it, and it slows the I game agree. down. I agree. It really does. The dealer's got to count it down. And I understand that when you're bluffing, when you bet $105 and in read, red chips, yeah. and it looks like it's a little bit more, but that, that but that really is my pet peeve. Let me get into a little strategy if I can. Give it to me. Okay. A couple things. If you, you, people who like have played, have had some limited success, one thing I would have them look into is the short stack in poker. If you play with like 20, 30 big blinds, that can be a dynamite strategy against really good players. If you just play premium cards and you got a big stack, you're going to get eaten a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? You can't just... You're you know, a little looser. You're getting involved a little more. But if you're playing just with 20 big blinds, you're going to be... Premium hands. Premium hands. You're going to be just fine playing tight, you know, you know, playing those hands. But some of the problem hands, and you hear this again and again, I fall victim to this. I looked at all my stats on how I would do, and not surprisingly, I absolutely kicked butt with the big hands, okay? 
But when you try to get tricky, yeah, ace king, no problem, destroy everybody. Okay, ace queen. You're playing those suited pretty good. connectors. Pretty you're good. Pretty, pretty good. Suited connectors are fine. Okay, pairs are great. You know, Foppa set, so easy to play. But the ace jack, you're in a world of trouble. When you're playing ace jack, if you get someone calls. Yeah, yeah, those raises, are dangerous. Someone hands. raises under the gun, you got to throw ace queen you away. You got to throw it you gotta away. You got to throw ace queen away, and you definitely have to throw ace jack away. But, um, I mean, depending, if you're in position, you're on the button, you got ace jack, that's a great hand to raise with. But I'm saying people way overplay that they ace do. jack call raises with it. One, one, one reference, and, and same thing, king. I like the short stack idea especially for players that aren't that experienced right like if you're short if you're short and you got ace jack and the button raises you and you're in the blunt just it's push simple. all in yeah. just push you it, know it's stick the decision it to him. simple stick it to him and he's sitting there with a pair of fives or ace five and and or king queen and he's like oh god you know but he's got two bad choices fold you know or call they're both bad but um you know I, another problem hand the king jack king queen the queen flops a guy bets into you you call or you raise and he doesn't go away and you get, you got a really tough yeah. decision to you know to make regarding that so one thing I, I always heard the reference and I really like this you got ace you got you got ace king you're at the top of the cliff okay at ace queen you go ahead and you walk to the edge of the cliff okay at ace jack you're hanging from the cliff ace ten let go you're at the bottom yeah. of the canyon looking up at ace jack ace queen and ace king yeah all too many hands here. beat you too, too many, many hands beat you and no one's gonna like stack off Mr. Ace seven gets, you know, you start firing into him, he's going to... No, I, I agree, and people play too many weak hands. I mean, that's what it is. I, and I would much rather have a live... Suit connectors are huge. People think, like, four six of diamonds is a suit connector. Now, five six, six of, of diamonds, diamonds you've yeah. got to actually be connected. You can't have that gap. In between. And another thing, if a guy raises, especially these online games, if a guy raises and you've got that nice seven, eight of clubs, sure, you can call him when you know no one else is going to re-raise. But when you got action coming after you, you, you got to toss it. You got to toss it. I if agree. If, if you're in middle position, but those are the those are the kind of, of of starting hands that you can make a score with. Right. You what you want is you want. But they're concealed. You want under the gun with 150 big blinds to be raising four times the big blind, and you're in the blinds. Exactly. The button, and then you can call confident you got them. You know, with a hand you can bust them with. I haven't signed up yet, and I'm really looking forward to it. Once yeah. I have some time, I said once these playoffs are over both NBA and NHL, and it's just a few months of baseball. Granted, we'll be studying up on football, but still, there'll be time to play poker. Yeah, and I feel that way because I've just been doing, I'm, I'm getting ready for the WNBA, I'm getting ready for the NFL, I'm doing the NBA, but right now, we're, we're with us down to eight teams, I'm doing the homework, and a lot of times, I, I look at it, and I'm, I'm, I'm not on a game, and, and, and they're not playing, you know, I'm not doing live wagering, and there's no halftime to So bet. you got some time, because poker, that's the only thing that, when I first moved out here, and I didn't have the responsibilities I have now, and I was just betting what I was being asked to bet and you know I didn't have to make any decisions I played a ton of poker but it just takes so much time I mean you have to put in the hours poker is not the kind of game that you could say you know what I got an hour I'm going to go play yeah you know you got to be able to put in the time and one thing about putting in the time and you know about this with blackjack because you're an avid card counter if they go ahead and they only deal three decks out of six you can't play it doesn't it's matter a dead, it's a dead game yeah you need a good situation same thing with game selection in poker one of the thing one of the tips i would give to everyone who's playing live if you're sitting like at a venetian place with like lots and lots of tables and you hear brand new game new two five it is really rare that that new game isn't going to be better than the game you're currently sitting at because what happens the bad players go bust or they leave with an an hour or two and then the pros sit on their fat butts yep. and they don't move and they order service and they and use grind. the red cards to grind pay for grind. it for the purple card at the venetian and they grind and i i would table hop i agree more. i agree I think that that's huge find the table with the weakest players the key is to find a beatable game yeah. and it's like that with blank check whatever you don't have to be good you just have to be better than everybody exactly else. and that's the that's the beauty of poker you're not playing against the house you're I mean, right. except for the rake you're playing against the other players but i want to go ahead and predict that this is going to be absolutely enormous huge with, big with, step for with, betting with what's for gonna, gambling with what's all going around. to happen and i think it was important that we cover it and so i, just, I agree i agree poker a couple quick tips one one i'm going to leave one more poker tip before we sign off here um and that's the ace king hand i saw a stat that you could be playing with 312 big blinds okay and if your head's up and you get ace king and you push all in and you flip your cards face up it's still profitable to do that is that amazing? With 300 plus With big 300 blinds? 300 plus big blinds. Is that wow. unbelievable? Because as it turns out, any pair will call you, but you know, you're, you're like 50, 
you know, a little hot, better. Yeah, 47 percent, 40, 45 percent. So it shows how the, the power of Ace King. Wow. And so when somebody raises and gets a couple callers and you got Ace King and you're not super big. Stat, flip it. Just push it. <laughs> Don't flip it. Don't flip it because you want Ace Queen to call you. But just strongly consider you're, you're on a drawing hand. Do you really want to call and wait for an Ace or no, King? No, you got to shove. Just shove. I, I prefer shoving. I, I love do. shoving with Ace King when there's a I prefer to shove. It makes the decision simple. Yes, and that's, that's really the optimal way for Ace King to see five Instead cards. of trying to outplay them with Ace called King. With, you know, by, by a pair it's of tough things. to outplay them with Ace King if you're getting called. Yeah, and then, then it kills your action. The King comes and... I the, agree. Or the Ace and... You shove. Know, shove. Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll have another... We'll have a follow-up in a little while. I can't Here's wait. Game.tv. We'll talk a little more poker and how things are progressing. Hopefully we'll have some more... Um, Companies entering into the fray, but uh, kudos to Station. Fantastic job. Yeah, congrats. Job. Get on over there, and um, I, 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 you know what? I'm going to give it three and a half forks. Th three and a half forks? I can't give it yet, but three and I'll half take forks. your word for it like Marco's. All right, Marco D'Angelo, three and a half forks. <laughs> Stay with us. Uh, check, 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 check out all the videos here at pregame.tv. <laughs>